comes to efficiency, we have to look at our fertility inputs into our farm and figure out not only where can we cut some dollars out, but where can we utilize, fully utilize the dollars that we are spending. I look at nitrogen and I think about the three means of nitrogen loss, whether that's leaching, volatilization, or denitrification. We have to eliminate those three, three things. We can't afford nitrogen loss on our farms this year. But the good news here is there are nitrogen stabilizers. Before we get to that though, let's just first go back to the real basics here. You've got to know what your soil can hold in the first place. So look at your cation exchange capacity, make sure you're testing your soil for that, and take 10 times your CEC, and that will tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. So here's just a quick example. Let's say I had a cation exchange capacity, or CEC, of six. Six times 10 is 60 pounds. Let's say I already have 20 pounds in the soil, that means I can apply 40 pounds. But you say, whoa, I wanna raise 200 bushel corn, I wanna put 200 pounds of nitrogen out. Okay, well you can only put 40 out right now. Well, if I put a nitrogen stabilizer with it, is that enough? Can I then put my 200 pounds out? No, I, I mean, you certainly can't exceed the number by five okay, times. Okay, well I'm just gonna stop you right there, because if you've got a CEC of six, you're going to have to spoon feed. There's no right. question, there's no question to it. And when it comes to using a nitrogen stabilizer, yes, that's going to help, but you still need to spoon feed. So here you go, 2015, that's the year you're finally gonna do it. You're finally gonna do it this way. Put a little bit on here, a little bit more here, and a little bit more there. You say, I, I may not have the equipment I need to do that, then you need to invest in equipment okay, because but, we've got to be able to do that. Okay, but the but here's the whole thing. When you've got a lighter soil like that, that I mean, a low cation exchange capacity means you have a lighter soil, maybe lower organic matter. In that case, you are at risk for volatilization and you're at risk for leaching. All right, when you get to real heavy soil, because a lot of people, like in our area, I mean, they might have a cation exchange capacity, like the ground we're standing on right here, cation exchange capacity is probably 35, and I'm only gonna raise 200 bushel corn. So you say, oh, oh I got no problems. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I, I'm just saying, I, yeah. I have no problems. I don't need a nitrogen stabilizer then because my ground is heavy. Well, you still do, because here's why. If you lay the nitrogen on top of the ground, you still have the potential loss of volatilization. Even if you lightly work it in, you could still lose it to volatilization. The other big risk is denitrification, because like the ground we're standing on, very flat, very heavy, water doesn't move through it very quickly. So what happens? We get a lot of moisture, and all of a sudden your nitrogen denitrifies. Okay, that's not a good thing either. So our point here is whether you have uh, light soil or heavy soil, whether you're in low rainfall or high rainfall, there are reasons why you may consider using a nitrogen stabilizer. And let me also say too, it might not be the same nitrogen stabilizer. There are many different products for many different uses. All right, and there's another form of nitrogen we haven't talked about yet that is getting put on millions of acres across the country right now, it's manure. And when you think about manure, a lot of guys just think, well, I got manure, I gotta spread it. It's going out in one shot because I have to do it in the fall before I get my crop out there. That's my chance to do it. Hey, you may be pushing it. There's no question about it. If you have to get that nitrogen out now, you may not have your soil everywhere across every field that's ready to hold that nitrogen. Fortunately with manure, it's gonna come uh, available a little more slowly than it would if you're putting out you know, anhydrous or you're putting out uh, urea or liquid 28%, something like that. But still, there are a couple of sta stabilizers, whether it's more than manure or instinct two, that you could put on that manure. I would highly recommend that because you think about how, how soon is your crop gonna be taking up that nitrogen? Well, quite a few months down the road. So you wanna make sure you're protecting it, whether it's in a commercial form or in manure. Look, in our opinion, in most cases, you're going to want to use a nitrogen stabilizer, but this is one of the things you probably want to just try out on your farm a little bit first, run some trials yourself, but all we can tell you is this. Everybody's looking at how do I cut expenses, and I get that. Well, your biggest expense on the farm in most cases is fertilizer, so the number one target is nitrogen. Everybody says, I want to cut back my nitrogen. All right but there's only a limit. I mean, you know you have to have so much nitrogen to raise a good crop. The point is, whatever nitrogen you do put out there, we wanna make sure it stays there. So a lot of times what guys are doing is they're cutting back their nitrogen rate and using a nitrogen stabilizer to make sure the nitrogen stays there and stays in an available form. 
But here's the other side I want you to be thinking about. Okay, if we've used less nitrogen and there's less chance of loss, isn't that a better thing for the environment? As farmers, we gotta be real careful because we're less than 1% of the population. That other 99%, they're really watching what we do. So look at your cation exchange capacity, use a nitrogen stabilizer, try to keep that nitrogen in the ammonium form so it's more stable than the nitrate form. And overall, we should have not only as good or better yields and slightly better profitability, but the other side of it is a safer environment. All those things are certainly good, Brian, but we can't maximize our yield potential in our field unless we can control weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 